Hi everyone, my name is Adam Wiener and I work on the developer operations team here at Facebook. My team is in charge of reviewing bots before they go live, and we're one of the uh, teams that makes sure that people have a positive experience when they're using Messenger. Over the next 20 minutes, I'll be talking about the review processes uh, for Messenger bots. It doesn't matter whether you're building your very first Messenger bot or your hundredth. I'll share some tips about how you can launch your bot as smoothly as possible and what my team looks for. Let me outline the format of this talk. First, we'll walk through how to build your bot within Facebook's policy framework by discussing the types of bots you can build and messages you can send. I'll also touch on a few of the policy issues that developers encounter most often. Second, we'll talk about the review process, why we review and what we look for. Next, we'll talk about getting review feedback on your bot and how the Messenger team can get in touch with you. Lastly, some of the resources that we've made available to you when you need help. First, we'll talk about the different kinds of bots. We categorize bots into three categories. This structure enables our teams to know what to look for and what to expect from your bot. The first category is automated. Automated bots are self-sufficient and often have their responses pre-programmed. If a bot is automated, there's nobody on the other end typing on a keyboard so that the bot can respond. Automated bots are the most common category by far. Then we have manual bots. We also sometimes call this human messaging or live messaging. This kind of bot is the polar opposite of an automated bot. There are no automatic responses. Every message that the bot sends is either written by uh, a live agent or is triggered by a live agent. If, for example, that person is asleep or away from their keyboard, the bot won't send any responses. We still consider these experiences to be bots because they use the Send API, but they use it as a conduit for their own messaging system, like custom-built software for a customer service center to help hundreds or thousands of people messaging a business at once. Bots that incorporate both automated responses and manual responses fall under the hybrid or mixed category. These are actually more common than bots that are strictly manual. As an example, let's say we have an airline that provides live support if you need to rebook your flight, but also automatic flight tracking. That would be an example of a bot that uses both automated and manual um, components. There are generally four different types of messages that can be sent in your bot. To be clear, these message types are distinct from the content types, sending text, images, templates, attachments, and so on. This is more talking about the different ways we allow those messages to be sent when they can be sent, and what kinds of content they can contain. Standard messages are just your standard back and forth. This is generally the majority of the messages that your bot will send when you interact with people. Then we have subscription messages. These are for specific bot types that we allow to send regular, periodic content if a user opts in. Now this is only for bots that fall under one of three different use cases, news, productivity, and personal tracking, as defined on our developer site. Subscription messages is really uh, useful when you're trying to push daily news content, daily weather updates, weekly calendar alerts, and so on. In general, the rule of thumb is people should have a pretty good idea that your message is coming because they've signed up for that service. Because this is specific to each and every bot, you'll need to apply for subscription messaging separately and explain what kind of messages your bot will send as a subscription. Next are tagged messages. These are for specific message types compared with subscription messaging, which are specific bot types. So we allow one-off messages in certain cases, things like reservation cancellations or delayed shipment alerts or a reply from customer service. All fall under tagged messages. Finally, our sponsored messages. This is a paid service to re-engage people who have used your bot. We know that people can get value out of these messages, but they have to be infrequent and highly targeted. A paid message type allows you to do just that. You can use your targeting preferences to reach your audience. Knowing about these bot and message types is important for review, since we'll ask questions about your bot type at the start of the review process, and for actually calling the API. We won't need to get too technical here, but you'll need to know what kind of message types you qualify for. I want to spend a little bit of time to review some of the policies that frequently elicit questions or confusion. The first is promotional content in subscription messages and tag messages. To be clear, we don't allow advertising, solicitations, marketing, or promotional content of any kind within those messages. This includes discount codes, special offers, and calls to action where you're trying to sell something. This content is limited to standard messages, which brings me to my next point. Let's talk about the standard messaging window. This is commonly referred to as the 24 plus 1 policy. This means 24 hours plus 1 message. The policy starts with a 24-hour period. Those 24 hours will begin when someone starts a conversation with your bot 
through one of our entry points, like sending a message, tapping Get Started, or using one of our plugins. Over the following 24 hours, you can send messages at any time. And as I alluded to before, these messages can include promotional content. If the recipient responds, you can send messages for 24 more hours from that moment. Once those 24 hours have elapsed, you can send one additional message through your bot to re-engage that person. If they respond, or if they start that conversation on their own, that will trigger another 24 hours of standard messaging. That's the 24 hour plus one message, or 24 plus one policy. The reasoning behind the policy is simple. If people are engaged with your bot, you can continue to send messages. But if they aren't continuing the conversation, we limit the communication you can have until they change their mind. On that note, we should also talk about incentivization. Simply put, incentivization is rewarding people to take an action that they otherwise wouldn't. For example, if people need to share your bot with five friends before they can use a special feature, that's not allowed. Same with having people like your page before they're allowed to use your bot. More information on all three of these is available on the Facebook Platform Policies page. On our developer site, just click Platform Policy at the bottom of any page. Let's talk about the review process itself. First of all, why do we review? On one hand, we want to help you put your best foot forward when you launch your bot. We want successful bots on our platform, and we want to see the ecosystem grow. On the other hand, we have a responsibility to look out for the 1.3 billion people who use Messenger every month. We want to make sure that they have a positive experience. We do this by making sure that all bots meet a certain standard, which is what I'll talk about next. Uh, so how does that review process actually work? Our review process is focused on two things, functionality and policy. Uh, functionality means, does the bot work? And policy is, is the bot safe for our community? There's a couple things we look for in your bot when it comes to functionality. The first is stability. We want to make sure that there's, your bot is reliable and that there are no bad surprises. We also look for broken features like endless loops or a link that goes to nowhere. We'll take a look to see if there are any blank areas or placeholders. This is because we're trying to get the picture as accurate as possible uh, when we're reviewing your bot so that you'll have all the core functionality in place when you've submitted for review. Although we understand that developers are constantly iterating, we want to have this most complete picture possible to make sure that your bot is functional and safe for our community. The next part is responsiveness. This is a cornerstone feature of many bots. Unlike your friends from high school, bots are not supposed to let you down. So we want to make sure that the bot keeps responding. Here's an excerpt from our uh, responsiveness policy. You should never have someone wait more than 30 seconds to get a response if the expectation is that you'll be responding immediately. Again, that is the definition of automated bots. Let's talk about policy. First, we look for misleading and confusing experiences. If your unsubscribe from updates button doesn't actually stop the daily updates that your bot sends, we'd ask you to fix that. People won't be happy if your bot isn't doing what it said it would. We check your experience against our community standards and platform policies. For instance, your bot can't show graphic violence or hate speech. We want to make sure that the information that people are sharing with your bot is protected as well. If your bot asks for credit card information to place an order, for instance, we want to make sure that that message is coming through not just as plain text. Or if you're a healthcare bot, we'll look to see whether you're sharing certain protected and confidential health details. As a reminder, what I've covered today is only a sample of the things that we look for during the messenger review process to ensure that everyone has a great experience. It's possible that you may run into other issues that I haven't yet addressed. So for the latest information, please check out the Facebook for Developers website. Now get out your notebook, because here's my take on some of the most impactful things you can do to get your bot through review and launch it smoothly. The first is give hints. Remember responsiveness? Don't ignore people when they write something that your bot doesn't understand. Make suggestions and guide them back onto the right track. Be aware of where we allow and don't allow promotional content. Finally, giving the option to unsubscribe or receive fewer messages means that people won't have to receive messages that they don't want and will be less likely to report your bot as a result. Now let's talk about the different ways that you'll get feedback from the Messenger team during the review process and throughout the life of your bot. You're probably familiar with this view of the developer dashboard. This is the inbox page of the alerts tab, as you can see here. Review messages come here in addition to your email if you have that enabled. But if you're like me and get just too many emails to deal with at once, you can always come to this tab to find those updates. Your email, of course, will direct you to this appropriate tab. But if you come here on your own, um, let's say you've gone through all the steps for review, 
Once those results are ready, you're going to get an alert um, in the Alerts tab. So we'll start by clicking the Go to your Messenger Submission button. And that'll bring you to the Messenger tab of the Developer Dashboard. If we scroll down, we can see information about the most recent submission. It looks like it wasn't approved. Just like it says, um, let's click Edit Details. And we can open up that for more information. This will bring up a more detailed view of the feedback from our review team. Now, what are the most common reasons for rejection? First is broken features. As I mentioned before, endless loops or links that lead to nowhere, buttons that do the opposite of what they say they do, and so on. Next is non-responsiveness for automated bots. And finally, not justifying how you're going to use the subscription permission. As I mentioned before, this is something that you have to apply for separately. You may also get a notification to check your page support inbox in the event that our teams have a policy issue to flag to you. From your bots page, first go to the Settings tab. Then you can select the page support inbox from the links on the left, right here. Here's an example of a warning for excessive negative feedback on the messages that your bot has sent. This messaging will usually include help links to make sure that you have all the information possible to keep your bot running smoothly. However, in the event that you still have questions, we have a few options. First, most notably, is the Facebook for Developer site. You can find much more detail and examples within our developer docs. It's not just code samples. From the main developer site, it's easy to access information that's specific to Messenger Platform. So as I've mentioned several times at this point, your first stop should always be the Facebook for Developers website. Um, the next would be the developer community. So we have two groups. One is the more general Facebook developer group, which has about uh, almost 100,000 members. And the next is the Messenger-specific group, which has over 30,000 members. Here you'll be able to ask questions, exchange ideas, and interact with tens of thousands of developers from around the world. Finally, if none of those answer your question, you can access direct support, which is our one-to-one -one ticketed support with our team, which is available after you go through review. This will actually put you in touch with a real person on our team who can help you get through review or figure out how to make your bot work while respecting our policy framework. All right, as we're wrapping things up, I wanted to share some of my top takeaways. We're trying to make it as simple as possible to give you the building blocks for a successful bot. You do all the dreaming and building yourself, and we try to make the review process as easy as possible before you go live. Ultimately, though, we take it very seriously, as it's a significant measure we take in keeping our community safe. We've touched on some of the most common questions about our policies and review process, so hopefully you'll be better prepared the next time you're launching your bot. Finally, I wanted to emphasize that our team is a great example of a group of people at Facebook who are on your side to help build great bots. That's all for today. Thanks for joining.